KFSR 90.7 FM, and CMAC, Comcast 93 and AT&T 99, present the Central Valley Ledger, formerly San Joaquin Spotlight. Tune in to 90.7 FM or Comcast 93 and AT&T 99. I'm your host, Sevog Tatiosian. Welcome to the Central Valley Ledger, formerly San Joaquin Spotlight. Our guest this week is Erica Garabedian. Erica has written a children's book. And uh, well, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your background. You're from Fresno? Um, actually, no, I'm from Madeira. Okay. Uh, born and raised. And I moved to Fresno and me and my husband got married and we were actually going on 10 years uh, being married, so. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. And the, the interesting thing here is, I know your husband, yeah. and I know your sister-in-law, <laughs> yes. and I've met you a long time ago yes. at church. So, yes. <laughs> so Small it was, world. <laughs> yeah, it, it was very interesting when, you know, that whole thing came out. I'm like, well, actually, I do know her. Yeah. So, small world, Fresno's a small town. So, you have a children's book that, uh, well, let me backtrack and ask you, why did you decide to write a book? You know, it's kind of always been something in the back of my mind. Um, I... I used to work for a newspaper in Madeira, um, and I always enjoyed writing. So when my husband and I decided to pursue adoption, and we were looking for books to be able to read to our son about the whole process, we just weren't finding any. So I just decided to go ahead and you know write down what I thought the kind of stories I'd like to read to my son. And it kind of just sparked from there, and here we are. <laughs> well. Did the, so you started writing when you found out you wanted to adopt a child, or did you just, uh, when did the writing start? It started when we started the process okay. of, uh, of his adoption. So when we started going to the classes and doing all those kind of things, we, you know, we were trying to prepare ourselves as parents, and so we're looking you know, for books on how we were going to tell our son someday about his adoption, and we just weren't finding it you know, the right books or what we thought was suitable for our family. So I just started writing and told my husband, well, I'm just gonna, you know, make a book just for him, just to tell his story. And uh, once it was all done, he, my husband was like, no, you need to get this published. <laughs> Other families will read this, <laughs> so. Well, and you, in this, the past, you know, this story that you're saying, I can ask you a thousand mm -hmm. questions. So I'm gonna start little by little, <laughs> okay. uh, digging a little deeper into this process. So. You decide you're gonna you're gonna adopt a child, mm -hmm. and then you know the writing. The pro once you start the process, you start writing. Tell us about the process a little bit. I mean, there may be people out there who may not know the process of adoption. Uh, well, you know, with our particular agency, they focus on foster care or foster to adopt, and so we actually got pretty lucky. We started with our agency and stayed with our agency. We've talked to uh, so many other families that start with one, two, three, four different agencies and then end up where, where we ended up. So we started there and um, they had like a free orientation session. We uh, just sat in, we felt really comfortable. And then from then on there was like four other classes we had to attend, plus getting like the CPR certification and the water safety certification. Uh, for us, I was in school during the time. Wow. So, yeah, and you know, and working full time. So for us, it probably took us like, I don't know, six months or so to complete all the paperwork and all the background checks and everything. I wanna say we started like in February and then our home study, which is like the final step, wasn't done or I guess complete, completely finalized in August and then it wasn't even uh, sent to the county until like November. So it took a while. Through the process, mm -hmm. were there any times where you said, you know, I'm not doing this anymore or any challenging times? Because, you know, you, you're a busy person, your husband's a busy person, mm -hmm. and now you've added the adoption process. So were there any times you said, you know what, maybe we're, we shouldn't be doing this? No, because for us, even when we got married or before we even got married, that was just, that was always the plan. It was, you know, either we were going to have children or, of our own or adopt or adopt and have children of our own, but adoption was always part of our life. It was, you know, it, it wasn't 
like an only option for us. It was that's what we were going to do and that's how we were going to build our family. Congratulations and thank you also for doing what you two are doing. Talk a little bit about when you say that you were looking for books or a mm -hmm. book to read to your child, you weren't finding one that you thought was suitable. Talk about that. I mean, were you, did you start getting frustrated in the process saying, why can't I just find this book? Yeah, I think so because we, there are so many books out there, but a lot of them deal with like international adoption and they deal with like private adoptions and not so much with foster adoption. And so, you know, we just want to be able to tell our son, you know, we prayed for you and we, you know, waited for you and there was, you know, yeah, things were tough, but in the end, all we cared about was bringing you home. And other books just don't, they go into this whole international thing and, and or meeting with a birth mom and, you know, that wasn't what our story was about. So that's kind of how it all sparked. Now let's keep talking about the book. So how often did you write? I mean, because, you know, you worked, you went to school, you have the adoption process. And by the way, it's not like you're busy, you know, enough. We're going <laughs> to throw on writing this book. Mm -hmm. So you start writing the book. How often did you write? I probably, it sounds kind of funny because it probably took me like a week. It was really, really <laughs> fast. You know, I just kind of sat down and was just writing my thoughts and, um, uh, Rafi would sit down with me and he's like, no, 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 that makes sense. You know, okay, keep going. So yeah, it was probably about a week or two. It wasn't very long. And um, once I was all done and, you know, he was like, no, you got to get this thing published. I submitted it within, I think it was like a week, they got back to me. So it, well, hold on. it We're gonna talk really, about the really, really fast. We're going to talk about yeah. the process of yeah. publishing too, because, you know, your book was published faster than mm -hmm. other people's books. But so... You start writing, and when did you know you had a finished product? Because, you know, you can, it, it, when you're writing a book, I imagine you can keep writing, writing, mm -hmm. writing. But when did you know that this was it? Um, well, probably after that, two weeks, and then we s decided to submit it, you know. Um, I wanted, It was probably like a couple of weeks after the first initial couple of weeks, because I just, like, obviously I had Rafi read it, and then I had my parents read it, and you know, went over questions with my in-laws and, and it was just kind of getting the feel from the family. And then it was like, okay, I can't do anything more. <laughs> I'm just going to submit it. And then they could tear it apart as much as they want to. So what's the book about? Um, well, the, the title of it's my forever Valentine. Um, for us, we brought our son home on, uh, or we became his legal guardians on Valentine's day. So that's, you know, the title and it's, just goes through a conversation between a father and son and you know the questions that a son you know might have about his adoption about when he came home and how the family reacted and how you know everybody if they were excited and what if he didn't look like us you know all those kind of questions these are questions that i mean i think and it sounds like you 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 were going this direction but mm -hmm. these are questions that an adopted child might ask mm -hmm. i mean so you start at what talk a little bit more about the book so do you do you incorporate stories or or how do you get the book to where it is now um no it's actually just a little bit of you know i when i thought about okay well i'm gonna name this book forever valentine okay how am i gonna start this book so then i said okay well i'm gonna just start it with it's valentine's day and that this child has finally decided to ask his parents why they call him their forever valentine so it just kind of goes into that. And so they just explain to him, you know, well, this is why, because we brought you home on Valentine's Day and, you know, everybody was so excited. And, you know, no matter where, you, where, where you're at, how old you are, on Valentine's Day, know that, you know, you're, you are our forever Valentine. Where did the name come from? Because I saw the, the so the, the reason I found out is your publicist sends me emails mm -hmm. and on the title on this one, it said Fresno author writes books or something mm -hmm. like that. And right when I saw the name Fresno author, I thought, okay, this is it. I'm going to get in contact with her. So I contacted her and that's how you and I connected. Mm -hmm. But then I, it was then that I saw in the email, My Forever Valentine. I thought that's a very creative name. W where did the name come from? It just kind of happened because, <laughs> because we knew, you know, 
for us. It was because we had brought him home and that was the date that we became his legal guardians. It just made sense. So, you know, I mean, I kind of went back and forth. Should I, you know, name it something else? Is it only going to, are people just going to think it's just a Valentine's story, you know, and not know that it's an adoption story? Should I add my Forever Valentine and adoption story? I mean, we went back and forth, but we just left it as my Forever Valentine and kind of went from there. So, the, so you submit the, well, now I want to ask you about the publishing okay. process because, uh, I, you know, of all the interviews I've done with authors, they've told me over and over again, they kept hearing no and they were persistent and they kept sending the book and no and sending the book. So publishing process, talk about that. So I just went online and to take publishing, went online, they have where you can submit a manuscript. I just uploaded my document, sent it, and was like, okay, we'll pray. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and I want to say it was like a week later. And they were like, congratulations. We love it. And the only critique they had was to define a character as they say, like, children would relate more to, like, an animal as opposed to it being, like, human beings in the story. And so that was pretty much the only change I made. Well, so then... They say they're going to do it, and then what, I mean, what was, what's the next step? Sign my contract and get started. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was really easy, and they've been really easy to work with. Is this a long book? I mean, how many pages did this book come I think up? it's like 20 pages, including the illustrations. It's a really short story for kids. And, and you said it's a kid's book. So mm -hmm. did you always know that you wanted to write the children's book? I mean, you know, because you come from newspaper background, mm -hmm. and so you know that children's language and language for like an adult are a little different. So did you always know that you're going to make it easy, an easy read? Um, you know, no, but when, when I finally did sit down and write it and I, and I mean, I have a big family and tons of little, little ones running around. So I just kind of thought that I would, you know, how, how do you explain something that's so difficult to explain sometimes to kids in like the easiest way? So that's kind of just the route I took. <laughs> so without giving us too much, mm -hmm. because we obviously want everybody to go out, purchase the book, read it, tell us a story that happens in the book or something in the book that, you know, you want to tell us, something short. Um, you know, I guess the message I want people to take from the book is um, so many kids, I think when they're adopted, they kind of define themselves as being adopted. And one thing I know I want my son to understand is that that's just part of his life. It's not his entire life story. It's not going to define who he is. It's just part of his life, and, you know, in the beginning of, of his life. But his whole life is in front of him, and he can be who he wants to be no matter what background he came from. Do you see, I mean, as you're talking, I could easily see this turning into a series of books as your child grows older and high school and college. I mean, are you going for more? Is there more here or you're just going to say wait and see? I think I'm just going to wait and see. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to take it all in and, and you know, we're, he's two years old. So it's, you know, just trying to deal with motherhood and working and him being two and, you know, see kind of, you know, if, who knows? I mean, he, he does some pretty amazing things. So who knows? It, it might spark my writing again to, you know, write some tales about him. You, you know, your husband was supportive and actually, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking a little bit off camera and you said he's the one that kind of said, you got to get this mm -hmm. thing published. So he's been supportive. Uh, how important has the family support been in not only the, the book, but this whole process? You know, it, it is really important. My, you know, I'll share with you my, my father who raised me, um, raised me since I was two. So for my family, adoption's always kind of been a part of our family. Um, you know, it, it doesn't, just because somebody's blood related to you doesn't mean, you know, doesn't mean anything, you know, it's, it's who loves you and who cares for you and who's, you know, raising you. So when we told my parents that, you know, this was the route that we were going to take, they were just ecstatic. They were ecstatic just to get a grandchild. <laughs> um, you know, Rafi and I were married eight years before we brought a baby home. So, um, and then my father-in-law and mother-in-law, yeah, they, everybody was just, you know, really excited. There was really, we didn't get any, like, negative from anybody, which, you know, I was really happy about. So the illustrations in the book, where did those come from? I mean, did, 
who did someone did the art, artwork for the book? Uh, the my publisher. Oh, the, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had asked, you know, if I wanted to do the illustrations, and I was like, no, <laughs> I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, I don't consider myself an artist. I can write, but I don't consider myself an artist. So, and it was really nice because they you know, let me lead the way. So when I decided that the character, was, you know, were going to be horses, they said, okay, well, you know, so they sent me like six or seven different pictures of cartoon horses, which ones did I like better? <laughs> oh, wow. You know, even the front cover, you know, how I wanted the title to look and where I wanted my name. I mean, so I was really part of the whole process, which was really cool. When I got the email and I read a little bit about, without, I didn't even know who, I didn't read who wrote the book. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm reading the paragraph, and faith is in there, uh, your faith, and talk a little bit about that, because, you know, I noticed that that was highlighted in the, in the paragraph of the book. Yeah, you know, because when we were going through the whole process of adoption, you know, we just, we had to pray together and stick together and know that in the end, you know, that we were going to bring a baby home. We didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. Or, or anything, but that, you know, our faith is probably what kept us strong, you know. Um, so many marriages, you know, when they're trying to have a baby or go through infertility issues or, you know, that can make, make you or break you. And for us, you know, it, it helped us. And so in, in our families, you know, we've, we've been very open with our families. Some people aren't, you know, they'll keep a lot of things private. We're very open with both sides of our family as to, you know, what's going on in our lives and what we're facing. And so I think that's just, you know, helped us. And, and as you tell me the story, and I mean, it, you know, I, I was laughing a little off camera because I said, you know, I knew this was a great story, but it gets better and better. <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm listening to you, it gets better and better. So, you know, it, how you open up Valentine's Day. I mean, how, how kind of do you end the story? in your book? Um, just by saying, you know, the, the character's name um, in the book would be like the son and his name is Henry. And so the father is telling him, you know, just know that every day, you know, every year Valentine's Day comes around, whether, you know, you're, you're older or you're alone, you know, you're not with anybody, but know that, you know, to your parents, you're always going to be there forever Valentine. They're always going to love you no matter where you're at. You know, when I've interviewed authors in the past, they've always said that the names come from some, some people in their life. Mm -hmm. The names come from, you know, a friend maybe, a relative. So how did you come up with the names of your book? Um, well, in, in the book, the parents are just re referred to as mommy and daddy. And then since we decided to do the character as a horse it was like Henry the horse. Like, <laughs> I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot of thought put into it, but I mean, I was, you know, throwing around names because I kind of wanted it to be like, you know, H. And it was like, Hank, no, Henry sounds kind of cool. So we just kind of stuck with it. And it you're, obviously, your writing has to be good if the first publisher, I mean, and, and that, I mean, you come with, from a writing background, mm -hmm. so obviously your writing is good, but it is impressive when the first publisher kind of says we want your book. Talk about the importance of writing. I mean, you know, you, you, you obviously you do a lot of write, writing. Mm -hmm. Talk about how important it is, especially for someone, you know, let's say in high school or starting college. Um, you know, I just think that, you know, they just need to, you know, take their English classes seriously, whether it's even volunteering at their school newspaper. Um, I mean, even now, I'm still learning. I'm a legal secretary, and I'm still <laughs> learning. You know, I mean, like, legal writing is completely different from writing a term paper, completely different from writing for a newspaper. Complete, you know, they're all, there's so many different styles of writing, and I think people just kind of get stuck in one way. You know, you learn to write, like, for a term paper, and maybe you're going to go work for a newspaper. Well, it's completely different. So... I think, you know, as a college student, you kind of just have to be open to, to learn and take the criticisms and, and, you know, just learn from there. I mean, even my own publisher, when I was, you know, sent the book and they were like, well, maybe we should put a comma here or not, you know, and capitalize this and not do this, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, you're the professional. Yeah. It, it sounds like, I mean, you know, the, the changes that they made, that you were willing to incorporate mm -hmm. them. So, 
What happens next? I mean, I, this is going to air after your signing mm -hmm. at Barnes & Noble, so I'm sure you're going to do great over there. But, I hope so. <laughs> so, so do you foresee yourself traveling through different towns or different Barnes & Nobles and places signing or talking about your book? Hopefully. I mean, I, I honestly, you know, as far as the book goes, I really just hope it raises, you know, a little bit of awareness to people about, um, about adoption and, you know, how to approach it, you know, like for us just i mean i i don't know if i'm gonna travel i you know we'll we'll, we'll see what happens we'll you know kind of take it a day at a time uh, i'm i hate to put you on the spot here but do you think there's a misconception about adoption out there i mean foster children and adoption do you think that as a community there's a misconception there i think there is a little bit i think there's people who are afraid of foster adoption you know and you know, I'll be honest, we went through, you know, a lot of ups and downs during the time when, before we finalized. But, um, you know, I think people just need to just take a leap of faith and, you know, just know that if it's meant to be for your family, it'll happen. Um, you know, we went through the process. It, it literally took nine months before we finalized our son's adoption. And I think one of the, the, biggest misconception that people have is that it's super expensive, which it isn't. Um, it's not like private adoption or international adoption. And there are so many kids just waiting. And, you know, and I was going to get into that later on, but so uh, you've been through the process. Mm -hmm. So you know more about the process than people who have not been through the process. So are there, I mean, are there a lot of kids, uh, the answer is yes, because you just said it, but the age groups, are there a lot of kids in different age groups? I mean, what, what can you say about that? Um, well, for, let, you know, for us, let's say, when we got our home study approved and they were calling us, we got, started getting calls in November. We were getting calls like every day. And we had said, you know, we're open to child up to the age of one. And we were getting calls like every single day and from all over California. So, you know, that tells me that there's a lot of kids, you know, and, and the counties take their job so seriously. They wanna make sure they have the right family match with the right child, making sure that, you know, that's gonna be a good fit for everybody involved. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of kids. I, I think I wanna say there's like, in California, there's like 50,000 kids or something in foster that's, care. I, I mean, mean that's an incredible crazy. number. So how important are families into this process? I mean, how important is it for families who, to say, you know what, I'm willing to adopt or I'm willing to go through the process? It's, I, I honestly feel that if every individual just took it upon themselves to open their hearts to adoption and, and take a child in, we could probably wipe out the foster system you know, there, there wouldn't be any more waiting children because so many kids don't get adopted and then they age out and then you don't know what happens to them. You don't know if they're gonna become successful adults or not. And, you know, the, the counties now f are focusing a lot more on getting kids younger into their forever homes, which is awesome. But you still have these kids that are 10, 11, 12, large sibling groups you know, not everybody can take in six kids. So um, I just think if everybody just, you know, would open up their hearts, then. When did you, or how did, the process of picking which child, because I imagine that could be also challenging, mm -hmm. picking which child. How did you, if it's okay me asking, how did you decide, you know, that this is the child? I mean, what's that process look like? Well, um, for us, we were pretty much open. We were like, boy, girl, doesn't matter. Nationality, doesn't matter. Um, you know, there was a lot of even different um, handicaps that we were open to. Um, so I just think Pete, when people like fill out those questionnaires, they need to be, really be honest with themselves. You know, what can you really, really handle? Um, we were willing to take on quite a bit. So, you know, we, I consider us so blessed. Our son is, so healthy and so smart and 
you know, he, he literally amazes us every single day. So. I, you know, bef we're running out of time this week on the program, but before you leave, I have to ask you about your sister-in-law, Lori, because mm -hmm. I went to school with Lori. Yeah. And, you know, when I got the Facebook message saying, by the way, your interview is my sister-in-law, <laughs> I thought, wow, what a small world. How, I mean, how, how energized is, was she in this process? I mean, how... Oh, she's super excited. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know her on Facebook. So, yeah. You know, she's super excited, um, super supportive. Uh, you know, the girls read the, her, my nieces. You know, they read the book, and you know, they love it. And she adores my, our son. So, you know, she's she's just o over the top about everything. I mean, pretty much everybody is our our entire family. So, talk a little bit about how people can find out more information about the book. What you know, where can they? order a copy are they available now yes they are available um, you can order them through Barnes & Noble through Amazon or straight from the publisher at TatePublishing.com I have to ask you when you when you open the and we're running out of time this week but when you open the email or, or whatever it was that said congratulations email I think mm -hmm. we talked about this what, what were you thinking when you when you saw congratulations we're, we want to publish your book you know, I was I was shocked actually. <laughs> um, I it was probably like eleven o'clock at night, and I'm checking my email, and I turn over to Rob. I go, "You're not gonna believe this," and he goes, "What?" And I go, "The publisher responded." And he goes, "And what?" I go, "They love it." <laughs> He's like, "Seriously? Oh, okay. Well, let's do this." Wow! Congratulations! Thank what you. a what a, a tremendous story this is, and you know, good luck to you, and thank good you. luck to your growing family, and thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. <laughs> That's all for this edition of the Central Valley Ledger, formerly San, San Joaquin Spotlight. Thank you to the volunteer crew in the studio now making this production possible. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you to our audience members listening to the broadcast on 90.7 FM KFSR Fresno or watching this on CMAC, Comcast 93 and AT&T 99. I'm your host, Sevog Tatiosian. Our guest this week has been Erica Garabedian telling us about her remarkable story. Thank you. Tune in next week to a new edition.